from FingerLakes1.com, I'm Josh Durso, and this is Inside the FLX. What does the United Way aim to accomplish? Most people know it's an organization that exists, but not as many know just how much amazing work they do. Seneca County United Way Executive Director Rhonda Jasper is with us today to wade through some frequently asked questions, ways folks can get engaged, and what problems they see as most pressing throughout the county. It's a great conversation and one that I hope you will stick around for. But before we get to that, I would like to let you know that today's show is sponsored by Mede, Miris, and Ricky, the Finger Lakes personal injury attorneys. No flashy jingles or catchphrases, just quality local service you can trust. With offices in Seneca Falls and Geneva, they are ready to serve you. So give them a call at 568-5861 or 789-9191. Thanks for listening, and we'll be right back with Rhonda Jasper. I was severely injured. I was on a ventilator. My husband was scared and he just went for the nearest number that he had heard advertised over and over and figured they're the best. They know what they're doing. I think that's the typical reaction, but unfortunately it wasn't the right one. And I'm thankful that we learned that early on in the process. He decided to look for someone locally who would give us a little more personalized attention. And when we met Steve and talked with him, we knew that we had found that person. If you you want to feel like you have an attorney who's in your corner, who's going to listen to you, who's going to endeavor to understand you, give Steve a call. I really felt like everyone at Madey, Miris, and Ricky really cared. For a law firm that cares about you, contact Madey, Miris, and Ricky at 315-568-0911. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. All right, welcome back. I'm joined by Rhonda Jasper, Executive Director of the Seneca County United Way. Rhonda, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So, okay, first things first, what is the United Way? Let's let's get that out of the way and then we'll sort of dive deeper into what you guys are doing. Well, the United Way is a nonprofit. Um, certainly everyone's heard of United Way worldwide and, and international, all those pieces, um, but we are the local entity. So we work with Seneca County. Uh, we focus only on Seneca County residents in our communities. Obviously we work in regional coalitions and everything. However, our focus is Seneca County. So we are an advocate for Seneca County within services. Um, definitely work to bring people to the table. We're a convener. We bring a lot of the, the right players to the table to talk about uh, and identify the issues in the community and just try to get everyone talking and things moving forward. So the, the logical question is, what is the, the separate from what is the need, but why does the United Way have to exist? Well, that's a very specific way of asking that. I think everyone wants to know, but no one knows how to ask. That's a great right. way to ask the question. Um, because when there are large issues out there, such as suicide and substance abuse and human trafficking, uh, illiteracy, poverty, things like that, they cover so many of the missions many of our nonprofits cover. So we have nonprofits who are fantastic at specifically their mission, what they do. However, when they're doing that day to day, they don't necessarily have the ability or the time or the resources to make the connections with the other to help build that bridge so people can get to independence. So yes, you know, places like the House of Concern are fantastic at emergency services and food, but they don't necessarily have the time to bring in the funds they need to support that while also making sure the person gets to the next step. So we're able to get the right people to the table and help build those bridges, help make those connections. Sometimes it's a program we're specifically involved in. Sometimes it's just us saying, hey, did you know so-and-so does this and bringing the right people together? And then we're able to step out and say that our work there is done. How, how important is that being sort of the facilitator um, especially in a rural county where uh, those types of that facilitative effort isn't always present or just isn't always baked into how things operate. It's amazing because when you think of a small community, you think that everyone probably already knows the right pieces. And that's not the case. Uh, when we did the, the, uh, input forms in the community last year, the one thing we kept hearing is that people didn't know the services out there. And I think a lot of us get very used to the fact that the world we live in is services. So we know when there's new ones, we know what's there. And we're not good at getting that information out there. We know that. The more resources we spend in advertising and pushing in that, the less resources we can spend in whatever we're doing, whatever that service is. So having, again, that one person who can kind of spend the time not doing the direct service, but making sure those phone calls are made, the connections are made, and it's bigger than us. I mean, it's everyone reaching out and doing it. There's a an open communication happening in Seneca County among providers that I've never seen, having worked here for mm -hmm. you know more than 15 years, and it's exciting. Um, and we're learning things every 
every day, but at least having those conversations happening, having those doors open, those relationships. So when someone hears something, it sparks enough to say, hey, let's call the United Way and see if they know something more. Or, you know, this sounds like something that they might know something about and maybe they have the right person to put us in contact with. So even in, in rural places, I'm curious, is part of the challenge just sort of wading through all of the information that's available out there? Because obviously there's tons of information oh, out yes. there, the internet, there's everything. Um, is that part of the challenge too, not just getting the information to folks, but actually sort of um, organizing it in a way that isn't totally overwhelming? Oh, certainly. I mean, besides the fact, obviously, when you bring it to the internet, so you're looking at what information is, is correct and what information is incorrect. There's always mm -hmm. that. Um, but also thinking about when we're rural, we don't have the same representation in statistics and numbers that cities do. So because Seneca County is small, we're often... Um, bunched in regionally, which means we get stuck with Onondaga or Monroe, which can be very beneficial for some things. However, when you start talking about numbers, we still have a small population. So even though the issues we have often beat this in the national statistics, unfortunately, the fact is a large number of a small population is still ultimately a small number in the grand scheme of things. So when funders are looking at things, when they're looking, they're looking at Monroe County numbers, they're looking at Onondaga County numbers. And so trying to get our information not only sorted out so that people know the numbers we're talking about are Seneca County specific, they're not some, oh, that's national, that's not us, but making sure people realize these things are at home, uh, but also having the regional conversations, having the national conversations understand that our numbers matter too, our communities matter too, and making sure that we're represented at those tables. So it's information both ways and making sure that the information is correct and specific to us. So how does, how does any organization go about <laughs> telling that story specifically? Obviously, you and I have talked about this mm -hmm. many a time before, <laughs> um, but how, how do organizations like the United Way tend to go about uh, conveying that message, especially to some of the regional and state folks who uh, might not look at a Seneca County or a Yates County quite this, or a mm -hmm. Schuyler County quite the same way as they would uh, Onondaga or Monroe or Erie? Uh, it's being active. It's knowing it's, it's knowing your stuff, um, being able to go to a meeting and speak up, being willing to. A lot of it is just the time it takes to travel to the regional meetings, have a presence. Um, you know, when people ask what we do, a lot of times it's we say we attend meetings and people are like, oh, well, that's no having a, a seat at those tables, being a voice in that conversation can be huge. It can make the difference between Seneca County getting funding or being seen and not. So, I mean, we have a network of partners. Uh, we constantly are talking about, you know, not just in our office, we're a very small office, but the people we work with, who's going to be at the meeting representing Seneca County, who's going to be here doing those to make sure that all of those slots are covered. And to that end, uh, obviously, let's talk about the, the dollars and cents side of it before mm -hmm. we get into sort of what, what the day-to-day -day looks like for you guys. Um, what, what is the, the money situation that you guys are working with? Obviously, there is no money tree. You no. don't have a money tree growing no. uh, on Main Street in Waterloo. Um, so don't how, tell does, anyone. No. how does that work? <laughs> uh, and then how do you guys go about sort of balancing things so you're able to cover all areas equally or as equally as possible? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question. Um, as a nonprofit, we are basically uh, donation based. Uh, we do have uh, some grant opportunities. We actually just wrapped up a five year grant, which was uh, substance abuse prevention specific. Uh, so that helped supplement some parts of the office in that program, but it was very specific as to what we could use it for. Uh, but we are donor based and uh, fundraising based. So when you see us out there campaigning, when you see us out there, you know, pushing Taste of Spring or, you know, our evenings at Dewey's, whatever it might be know that those dollars stay local and that's how we fund not only the checks we write to support our partners because we have funded partners but also the efforts we have in the house which is you know going to those meetings speaking regionally helping with those conversations um, you know in our office we house the Seneca County Substance Abuse Coalition the Suicide Prevention Coalition which are certainly community coalitions but you know we need the the backing to be able to help support those and make sure they're framed correctly and, and appropriately and to that end, I mean, it, it really comes down to a, a frank point that if you guys weren't, no one would, correct? Correct. Yeah. We, we kind of fill a spot that no one else has the ability to. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the smaller agencies, when you look at like completely volunteer-based, like um, literacy volunteers and, and things like that, or mostly volunteer-based, they don't have the time to provide their service and do the fundraising. So a lot of the partners that we fund 
we give them funds they otherwise wouldn't have access to because they would have to take the time out of what they're doing in order to do the fundraising. Um, and we also are able to pull resources from worldwide. We do pay, you know, one and a half percent of our, our income goes to dues to worldwide in New York State. But we get so much back from that as far as training opportunities and information and and nonprofit, you know, guidance and things like that, which we can share with smaller nonprofits in this area who certainly wouldn't have access to those things. So uh, one of the cheat sheet, one of the cheat sheets that I'm grateful <laughs> that you brought in uh, it points out that you know you guys have raised something like two hundred eighty-two thousand dollars and invested two hundred seventy-seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars back into the county. Um, what does that look like, or what are some of the things? That, what does that investment actually look like uh, to some of the folks who might not be? Uh, up on all the things that you guys are doing. Sure. Um, Well, I can tell you those numbers are from the last funding cycle. So that's last year. We're obviously in campaign right now for raising for this year. But um, so $200,000 directly went back to our funded partners. So the Seneca County House of Concern, Safe Harbors, all of those are funded partners um, who have to put in an application we have a committee that goes through and makes sure that they're financially sound that they're you know that their mission aligns with ours that they're Seneca County focused Um, and also when we fund one of their programs we fund a specific program within their agency so when you think of something like Seneca Falls backpack clearly their money stays in Seneca Falls and focuses on the kids who need food. However, mm-hmm. when you look at something like Safe Harbors, which is a fantastic organization, they're regional, they have several counties, but our money specifically stays with the Seneca County program. So for instance, last year, our monies went to help support the education program in the Seneca County schools. They're in all four districts. They help teach our kids, you know, preschool on up about safety and personal safety and all those things. And actually we got news that because it's been so supported, they were able to to get outside state funding for it now. So they're able to support that program on its own through other funding and have applied for a different purpose in Seneca County this year, which is exciting because we were mm-hmm. able to help them, you know, find their footing here so that it could be continued. And, and what did, what is the, the feedback, Ben, or what is the feedback uh, normally when you guys are, are out there in the community, um, you're giving back in all these different ways or helping to organize give back um what what what's the feedback typically uh about united way specifically uh that no one knows what we do because we're terrible at talking about it (laughs) um and we know it we're working on trying to figure out how better it's tough because we are just one cog in the wheel i mean it's it's a huge team and we're part of it so we can't take credit for the work other agencies do we're very aware of that um someone once told us you know you have to think about how like Intel, you know, advertises their processors like they're not the computer. They don't do it all, but they're part of it. And so trying to figure out exactly how to talk about being part of it without taking credit for other work, but making sure people know what we're doing is tough. Um, So anyone who's willing to sit with us like you and and talk and chat, unfortunately, we don't have a one sentence. This is what we do. We feed hungry kids kind of, you know, uh, thing. But we do know that we have an important role. Uh, last couple of years, we've really focused in-house with the board on strategic planning about making sure that we are not spreading our resources too thin, that we have very specific goals and very specific aims. And there are fantastic agencies and causes out there, but we can't support them all. And we need to make sure that, that what we're doing is making a difference where we're trying to make a difference. And, and what you guys are doing is specific to, um, you've mentioned it a couple times, specific to Seneca County. Mm-hmm. This money isn't going to Ontario County or Cuga County, places around. It's specific yep. to Seneca, right? Unless someone designates it specifically to another county, it stays right here. All right. So uh, obviously you guys work with a, a, a long list <laughs> yes. of organizations. Yes. Um, how you, you sort of alluded to it a little bit, but mm-hmm. how difficult is it really like facilitating and working with all of these different organizations, which undoubtedly, I'm sure, have varying uh, structures organizationally, Mm -hmm. et cetera, how they Mm -hmm. operate missions. how do you parse all that out and just handle it on a day to day? Well, we have a very patient committee, um, which is board members and community members who have uh, graciously sat with me for hours over the past couple of years looking at the application process and, and our requirements and all that because um, I came from a unique position having worked at Seneca County House of Concern prior to here having filled out that application having been a partner on the other side so I had that unique per, uh, 
uh, perspective when I came in and we've really redone the application to make it easier for our partners. Like I said, several of our partners that are smaller um, truly do depend on our funding and our support, but a lot of the larger agencies, we understand the support that we can give them is small compared to their general budget. So we have to balance that line between supporting Seneca County and making sure those resources stay where they are, but also not asking too much of an agency in response for it. You know, we certainly expect them to be partners. It's more than just accepting our check. Um, you know, we need your voice at the table. We need you to participate when you can. Uh, but we now have a, a six month check that agencies have to do. You know, this is where we asked the funding to go. This is where it went. This is how many we served with it just to follow up to make sure it stays in Seneca County. Um, you know, it's been a process and we've lost some partners along the way who weren't as invested in the same impact model that we were um, and we've gained new ones as we've moved on we've actually had agencies put in separate programs so there's two in one agency that are supported uh, but it's exciting we have some really um, active partners who are active on their end it doesn't involve a whole lot of reminders from us which is nice yeah and it, it sounds like you're saying basically that it's a two-way street and Sorry. everybody has to be part of the solution um, and then some of your some of the the good uh, word and good press that you guys end up getting is actually derived from the work that these folks are doing mm -hmm. in the community. Um, so one of the questions that kept popping up on social media as I was combing and and put throwing out some inquiries to to followers of the, our Facebook page. Um, does it ever surprise you or any of it? Probably not you at this point. <laughs> um, but does it ever surprise the folks you talk to uh, just about how much need actually exists in Seneca County? Like, is there ever that sort of like wow moment where they just, they're kind of speechless at how um, needy parts of the county are? Oh, certainly. I think uh, Seneca County is unique because if you look at our numbers and there's great surveys about, you know, the need in the area and all that, we look pretty average, but we only look average because we have two ends of the spectrum. So we have the end that's definitely, you know, higher end and wealthier, more more comfortable, and then we have the end that's in so much need that people don't realize it. So when you look at the overall numbers, again, we're average. That's not what the picture looks like. Um, you know, people are often shocked to find out that we have homeless here because homelessness here doesn't look the same as it does in the movies. You're not going to see people. It's cold. No one's standing <laughs> on the street corner. Um, but the amount of families who have to go from couch to couch, from you know, who don't have a uh, who don't have sufficient housing, who don't have heating this time of year, um, people are very good at appearing like everything's okay. People don't like asking for help. It's you know something we all struggle with. Uh, so you're always shocked by who needs help too. And I think that's part of it. We're a small community. You assume you know all the pieces, but certainly everyone has a story. And uh, it's amazing how many people are helped by services that you would never know. And the, the follow-up question that popped up right after that one yeah. was, is the top end, is that top line that you're talking about, mm -hmm. the, the sort of the have versus the have not, is that line actually lowering uh, over the last several years from what you guys have seen? I, or is I, it kind of hard to pinpoint given how little data there actually is? I was going to say, it's hard data. to pinpoint. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint. And um, because our numbers are so skewed, because they are just generally averages, um, you know, I will say there is a huge disconnect between those who receive services, whether it's, you know, food pantry services or, or domestic violence, any services we have, literacy services, um, and those who provide it, because obviously those who are working in it know it, and all of the people we ask to support it. Uh, local businesses and families and you know whoever it is that we're looking to because people don't necessarily see that I always go in and do my presentations and ask people you know next time you're driving through town look around actually watch on your you know look for the house that looks like you know it needs some major repairs that someone can't afford look for you know the family in the store that's picking but you know just be aware of it and people always come back when I see them the next year and they're like you know we started paying attention we really saw that and I said yeah um, or you start talking about housing prices in the area or finding an apartment I mean, obviously, I'm very fortunate. I have a good job in the area, and I'd have trouble affording an apartment in the area because housing is, is an issue that most people who own a house don't think about when you start thinking of those things. So it's just thinking outside of what your day-to-day -day is. Is there also an element of 
wrapping one's mind around the differences between the North and South and that, I mean, all of these issues are issues in the North and mm -hmm. in the South, but then they seem to also be exacerbated a little bit in the South compared to the North. Oh, certainly. I mean, and to think, I mean, we're so lake locked that if you're in the middle of the county and you don't have a vehicle, it's really hard to access anything. I mean, forget services, you're talking groceries and, and I mean, luckily they have the health center in Ovid now, but I mean, things are very, very limited and to get there is hard. Uh, you know, we are fortunate to be able to work with partners and be bringing them into Seneca County. You know, since we've started working with them, Safe Harbors has a, an office here now. And, and, you know, we're constantly trying to bring people in. And But just because you have a location in the north end of the county does not mean you're accessible to everyone in Seneca County. Um, so that's a huge conversation we continue to have with people. You know, and often when people come to us looking for funding, it's to fund the travel costs of getting a worker in and down so that people can get, you know, and that's fine. We, we're happy to help with those things because we want to make sure people do have access to services. Um, it is tough. And when you look at the way our county is set up, when you get towards the southern tier, a lot of people head toward Tompkins for services mm -hmm. as well, which makes sense because it's closer, but that also skews our numbers because it's harder to trace and it's harder to see those pieces. So it's a, it's a unique situation we're in, you know, beautiful area. Uh, the lakes are wonderful. However, they do make uh, traveling <laughs> east and west a bit difficult at times. So then on top of that, um, <clears throat> just the, the length from north to south is mm -hmm. also tends to be an issue mm -hmm. um, for some folks, especially when it comes to transportation. So I ask then, is transportation sort of the game changer that, that when Seneca County is finally able to really turn the corner, mm -hmm. will it be because transportation was finally sorted out and made a little more reliable for everyone across the board. I would like to think that would be a huge, a huge part of it. Um, I mean, we do have the busing system now, but it doesn't run in South County like it does in North County um, because it's one of those, you know, you don't necessarily have the people to support it, but without it, the people who were supporting it don't have a way to get to, you know, and everything is, is a business or at least has to meet their bottom line. We understand that. But if we can figure out how to use the resources we have, um, and be able to get people, either bring services to people or bring people to services, whatever it may be. Um, and also being aware that even if we get a bus system, if you jump on in Lodi, by the time you get to Geneva and back, it's a day. I mean, you're, you're not looking at running into town. Uh, so we need to start thinking outside of the box and, and how we can use our communities. And you know, one of the great uh, examples of that is the, the Seneca County Trans, or South Seneca, County Transit, they changed their name, um, but it's volunteer based. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they get their mileage back, but uh, a lot of retired folk are doing it and they're able to get their mileage and they help pe get people to doctor's appointments who otherwise couldn't. But again, that's using people we have, using resources we have um, and being creative, which is what we need to do. And, and that must really, I, I, from your line of work, that must really speak to uh, the quality of people that we have here in Seneca County who are willing to do that kind oh, of- certainly. We have amazingly generous people in this community. I mean, we're not known for being wealthy, certainly. We don't have a lot of financial resources here, but people will give what they have when they can to help. Um, and what we don't have in financial resources, we certainly have in people resources. Um, the people we have here in these communities are absolutely amazing. Um, and as far as stepping up and taking care of their own, it's, it's amazing to watch. So one of the things you hinted at a little bit earlier um, that is a big issue in Seneca County, uh, food access. Mm -hmm. um, and that is probably, I think, the one that, that is most surprising to folks on the outside who may not be living this kind of thing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, they hear about the work that like Food Link is doing in Rochester and Syracuse, and that's understandable urban city, that type of issue mm -hmm. exists, but that's really an issue um, in rural communities too. Um, and it, it was funny, like over the last few months I've had reason to, so I've been looking, you know, looking through the directories and it's amazing how many uh, food pantries actually <laughs> exist in Seneca County. Mm -hmm. um, obviously that's a big part of what you guys are doing, mm -hmm. sort of facilitating on that side. Uh, just speak to a little bit of how much of an issue that is and how uh, troubling that is for a county like Seneca, which as you said, is spread out. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's tough because when people think of food pantry, we automatically think of like canned drives and things like that, which is true and it's helpful and everyone needs their protein and peanut butter and their tuna fish and, and all that. <laughs> However, um, the fact is trying to get healthy food, vegetables, fresh vegetables, meat, things like that to people across the county are hard. Um, you know, we are very fortunate to have the Senate County House of Concern here, which is a large volume food pantry and has the ability to 
um, store a great deal of food, be able to take in, you know, uh, donations from Food Link when it comes from stores. But a lot of the smaller ones, yes, we have a number of them throughout the uh, county. However, many of them are volunteer based. Uh, many of the volunteers are are getting older and aren't able to do the lugging and the carrying and the delivering they once did. Um, and it's hard to get new volunteers to do something that's you know, every week or twice a week uh, and get them to commit to it, especially if they're still working or have young families. Uh, so getting getting the food to the sources and then getting the food from the sources to the people is a, a special and unique uh, issue we have here because, again, of the distance and everything. Um, and when you're talking about fresh produce and meat, there's a turnaround time. There's storage, there's turnaround. It has to be given out in a certain amount of time. You know, there are rules and regulations. And if you work with Food Link, there's trainings. And I mean, it's it's not as simple as tossing some food in a bag and passing it on. So aging volunteers, I think that's yes. something that, that's worth talking about a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, you know, when I when I sit down with folks organizing festivals, <laughs> clubs, you name it, they all say the same thing. They say that. They say that's the biggest challenge is getting young people involved and finding the young people who, who can get involved because mm -hmm. there is a shrinking, uh, that, that 20 to 45 is the shrinking population mm -hmm. uh, in places like Seneca County. So uh, how, how pressing is that issue? Um, in terms of what you guys do and what the, the organizations that you guys work with are able to do? Well, um, because every organization we work with is a nonprofit, we all um, have very limited resources, um, even the larger ones. Uh, and to get funding for paid staff through grants and things can be very difficult. People don't want to pay salaries. When you make a donation to a food pantry, you don't want to hear that your money is going to pay a person you want it to buy food. We understand that. But with shrinking numbers of volunteers, we can't do what we need to do without paying people. And we don't have as many people who have the time to donate. I don't think it's that people don't want to volunteer. People are working longer hours. People have families now that they're older. Um, you know, there's lots of different pieces out there. Um, the, you know, the volunteers we have are fantastic, but so many of them are so busy that they can only do, you know, a little here and a little there, which is great. We still appreciate it. You know, I volunteer for places too. I certainly can't give a lot of time, but I do what I can. Uh, but the fact is, we don't have the volunteers we once did. Um, and when you talk to nonprofits, another issue with that is board members, is finding people who want to be on boards because it is a commitment. There are certainly boards that are more meet once a month than just do the, you know, and some agencies run that way. But like ours, the United Way board is a very active board. Mm -hmm. So you're making a real commitment to this community and our agency. And it can be tough to find people who our workers who buy into it and who want to give that kind of time. Is it a matter of sort of conveying to people how few individuals are actually involved with making sure that the day-to-day -day <laughs> operation happens? Because I think that's one of the things that might get lost on some folks when they, mm -hmm. when they do have that concern about, oh, my money is going to pay a salary. Mm -hmm. Well, there might only be two or three people working the entire county actually right. being paid. Right. And that is, I mean, when you think about what Seneca County needs and how big it is and all the challenges, mm -hmm. two or three or four or five people just, it ain't it. That isn't right. the answer, right? Right. Well, and when you think about it, when you're looking at nonprofits in New York State, I mean, there are things we have to do. New York State has rules and requirements. We have to file taxes. We have to have financial you know, reviews or audits. Um, <clears throat> there are pieces you have to do annually to maintain your nonprofit. So, I mean, there are legitimate administration costs that have to happen. <clears throat> you know, we need computers to do work. You know, we need a space that has heat and light. So there are things that have to be paid for, um, whether you're looking at volunteers or paid staff. Um, but the other thing that people don't often think of when you're thinking of nonprofit is yes, anyone working in a nonprofit would love to be able to donate their paycheck back. But the fact is we're doing it as careers and as jobs. And if you want qualified people, you have to be willing to pay for them which again is is unfortunate because in a perfect world we'd all you know give our skills it willingly however um you know if you want people and you talked about losing the younger crowd from seneca county i mean getting people back here for jobs is tough getting people back here for nonprofit jobs is is a special kind of tough because notoriously they're not particularly high paid positions when you look in the general scheme of things um and they are jobs that often are all-encompassing. I mean, you know, it, it's 
you, you don't have just a desk job or just a, you're doing a little of everything. So finding the right people who have the connection to the community um, and it goes for volunteers too. It's it's a special thing. I mean, you need to find someone who's interested in your mission, who has the time, who wants to, who's a good worker, who will represent you well, who, I mean, it's a, it's a big piece. Um, and training volunteers takes time. Training volunteers often takes paid staff because they need to know the ins and outs and you need to make sure. And if you have volunteers, then you need forms to sign in case something happens and you need a contact person and you need so each each layer adds something else to it um, and I think nonprofits in this area are very good at working with what we have um, when you look at the agencies that cover several counties a lot of times there is only one or two people uh, like you said assigned to Seneca County and if they're working out of Geneva part of their time is already travel and they're doing the best they can um, but resources are limited all the way around so being creative being able to share resources share office space you know help each other out all those pieces is something that again those conversations help with is it a matter of getting some of those uh, some of those services actually in the county continuing that push toward getting mm -hmm. the services in the county as opposed to having them outside and serve the county mm -hmm. oh I definitely think so like I said we've had a couple that have, have made and now have uh, offices here and I think it certainly can help um, but also there's ones that can work more electronically and and be more you know they don't necessarily need a desk space or an office space if what they do can work and travel with them so I think again I think we need to get creative and figure out how we can bring services to people in in the most cost-effective ways and that may not be bricks and mortar building depends mm -hmm. what they're doing so uh, last question for you how can folks get involved how can folks sort of uh, help the mission help what you guys are doing uh, is it bodies? Is it donations? What, what is the, the sweet combination that you guys are looking for? <laughs> Whatever they want to do, we will take them. Um, even if you just want to stop in our office and talk about Seneca County, um, anything we can do to help people better understand our county, what we need, where they can help is fantastic. Like I said, we're very fortunate in Seneca County. We have some tremendous uh, nonprofits working. We have some tr tremendous programs up and running, especially for a small community. Um, we need better word or way of getting that word out there. So if you know about them, spread the word we'd appreciate that uh, but find your mission find what you really want to support do your research make sure that the agency you're doing is doing the work you want to support mm -hmm. and support them be it donating time be it donating dollars we all work together we'd never ever ask you to stop donating to one of our partners because they all do tremendous work but you know if you can toss us five dollars then that's five dollars more that we can put towards other programs so mm -hmm. never doubt that what you're doing is enough um, you know, we talk about dedicated volunteers, but showing up at an event and working for two hours makes a difference. Throwing change into one of our things at a store when you see it and you have change in your hand makes a difference. Like, don't ever think that what you're doing doesn't make a difference. All right. Appreciate the time and uh, best of luck with everything you guys got going. We'll uh, probably be talking again next month, I bet. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, thanks for making Inside the FLX a part of your week. New episodes air on Thursday and Sunday exclusively on FingerLakes1.com. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're listening on iTunes, rate and review the podcast. It helps new listeners find the program and ensures that local journalism continues to thrive here in the Finger Lakes. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, stay tuned to FO1 News for all of the region's headlines.